the next speaker that I'm gonna, we're going to bring up today, Prin Moody, he's the managing partner of Strat Marketing Group. His talk today is going to be on the magic of marketing automation, like going to Disney World. So uh, everyone's going to be happy after this talk. But uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Prin. Prin is the founder of Strat Marketing Group. He has over 15 years experience in marketing services, demand generation, and business strategy. He has a proven record of being a thought leader in metrics-driven, insightful marketing strategies and automation. Working with clients ranging from Facebook to Allied Electronics to California Casualty, his experience spans a myriad of industries. Prin holds an MBA from Northwestern University Kellogg School of Management with an emphasis in marketing, business strategy, technology, and e-commerce. Please give a warm welcome to Prin. First of all, I wanted to thank uh, CFE Media and the sponsors for creating this fantastic opportunity in terms of creating this forum to learn from each other with our experiences, right? So I don't believe that I'm here to teach anything. I'm here to talk about the experiences we have had. And I'm happy to be challenged because I'm sure we're not always spot on. But there are things that we have seen that have worked well. And, and to us, uh, Jim is absolutely correct when he says that uh, they thought this through because Dan's PowerPoint was uh, music to our ears. Uh, it's, it's fascinating to see when companies do follow a specific process, how actually, how does it map to the results that are shown? And that's where technology is here to help. Right? It is a bit overwhelming, but the premise of technology is to help us do what we do better. Today's conversation, I think I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the tactical side of things in terms of what Dan said and how to implement those principles using the technology without getting too overwhelmed. And, and for those that actually currently already have an automation platform, uh, we certainly have other uh, giveaways that we could have as a, as a takeaway piece in terms of white papers and things like that. So happy to have a conversation about that on the side as well. But I wanted to have a quick outline of my discussion, uh, not necessarily for me to get the order right in my mind, but for you guys to know you might want to check your emails or things like that. So this way, uh, you guys have an idea of what we're going to talk about. The crux of our conversation is going to be about marketing automation. Why marketing automation? Do you even need automation? And, and what does marketing automation even mean? Because some people, and then we've talked to some, uh, some companies where they all say that I, uh, when I had marketing automation, I was thinking that we could eliminate some people from marketing. But we aren't quite automating that much. Right? So, so marketing automation is not here to replace a marketing department and the personnel. The other myth is, to us, marketing is the same marketing in terms of the core fundamentals that it was 10 years ago. So just don't let anybody tell you that there's a whole new paradigm of marketing. The way we execute has changed, but the principles are still the same. The, the, the fundamentals in terms of how we reach our audiences may have changed. And that's where technology is here to help, because our budgets apparently haven't changed as much. Right? So if our budgets have not changed, we've got to find a way of working more efficiently and in a more quantified manner, so that way we can justify our credibility and trust to our internal constituents. Uh, and that kind of goes to the first presentation we had about the right brain and the left. And this is what automation will do for you. It will allow you, um, oh sorry, you don't need that. I think you did a better job. But, so this is a quick uh, one slide on, on how we see the companies we work with, right? Majority of the time, we'll say manufacturing companies, they're very engineering driven, they're sales driven, they want to enter new markets, so they'll develop new products for growth, uh, they'll, they'll hire uh, research people, they'll do customer satisfaction surveys, uh, but at the end of the day, they, they struggle to get that double digit growth. And then the question as to why, because they've done everything right. They've checked all the boxes. They've hired the best engineering talent they can. They've generated the best product pipeline that they can. They've hired new skills in terms of sales and cold calling and things like that. But at the end of the day, somehow the dots are not connected. And the question always comes down to their go-to-market plan. Because how many people now believe that competition is more than ever? Differentiation or perceived differentiation is not the same, right? So if those things have changed, the whole landscape has changed, 
The way we, we uh, through the surveys that Patrick took us through, we've also understood that our prospects, our customers, now consume information in a plethora of sources. So given all those sources, how are we reaching out? Are we doing one direct mail campaign to say 10% off if you buy today? Or do we actually have a conversation? I'm gonna steal a line from somebody I read yesterday, and they said earlier, about 10 years ago, marketing was developing a myth and selling it. And now, it's about uncovering the truth and sharing it, right? It's about uncovering the truth and sharing it. Where you're talking about all the things that Steve talked about earlier with regards to content stream. It's not about sales, it's about having a conversation that may lead to sales. It's about establishing that trust and credibility. It's about measuring where you spend your time and energy and how does that relate to the business objectives that makes this very challenging and fascinating. Actually, it's a double-edged sword. It's a fascinating world, but it is also overwhelming at the same time. And that's where prioritization comes into play. So, in terms of this, the, the landscape itself is also not quite helpful. Because according to some of the statistics out there, manufacturing as a whole in the US is scheduled to grow at about three, three and a half percent. If it's growing at three and a half percent, how do you get 10, 20, 30 percent growth rate? Right? You could certainly go out and acquire companies if you want, which is not the easiest proposition. Uh, you could certainly go overseas, which is a whole different uh, seminar altogether. And the third thing is you could grab competitive market share. And how do you do that? So to us, the most effective way, obviously, is to grab competitor market share. And the easiest way to do that, I say it easiest, it's more relative, is all about content marketing. It's about generating that trust in your prospect, in terms of what you as a company stands for, what your brand stands for. What do you mean when you say you have the industry leading quality? And having that conversation with them on a regular basis. So, before we get into marketing automation, I'd like to take a quick step back to just do some introspective analysis. And, and I'll, I was surprised as to how many of our partners haven't quite put the time and energy to do that. So if you were to just think about it from a marketing standpoint and, and try to see if you can tier your customers. I know a lot of your companies probably cater to multiple industries. They probably have multiple product lines. The question is how much of that and add, how much of these product knowledge do we use in making our marketing decisions? Which products generate the most to the bottom line? Which products generate the most on the top line? How do you allocate your marketing resources along the industries you serve? I mean, I am not even talking about the channels yet. We haven't even talked about email or content marketing with regards to online ads or anything like that. The question is, an average marketing, marketing team, if it's five people, 10 people, where do you spend your resources? So for us, what we start with when we work with companies is how can we value, uh, create value across the different tiers of all the different products or industries that a particular company um, plays in? And the idea is then to understand how does this jive with the business objectives? One thing Dan said very clearly was the ability of these kinds of processes, whether it is technology or the processes, to tie their, to tie their contribution to sales. Because business, if you talk to a CEO, more often than not, they'll say we need 10% growth, which is X million dollars. And if you can talk that language, now all of a sudden you have that ear. One thing that these kinds of things allow you to do is get a seat on the decision table. Traditionally, marketing was just a person who did shows or print ads. But now, given all these different technology platforms, you can have a seat at the decision table if not already. Because you are at the crossroads of all the different variables that can be used to come up with a clear picture of how are you going to map the business objectives to a tactical plan that makes it happen. So for example, you might want to spend some time on creating uh, online ads to generate a whole bunch of traffic, which then kind of filters and automates some of those processes because those prospects come to you more often, but don't generate that much margin. And as a result, your analytics in terms of your manual bandwidth, your human capital is spent 
on higher revenue generating products or higher margin products. And that's what an automation platform allows you to do. So in the next few slides, I'm going to quickly go through uh, the different things that an automation platform enables. If you look at a day in our lives, you know, we obviously have business goals that we have to live by, but we don't always get correlating budget bandwidth to be able to execute on those. We certainly have talked about all the different channels that are out there, and the idea is, what is it that we can do? A marketing automation platform can help us calibrate our efforts to allow us to manage these variables, to do more with less, so to not eliminate resources, but to use resources in a way where we can tie our contribution to sales, right? So the next slide, it talks about, if you, we've, we've heard so many things. We've heard social skills, social media skills. We've talked about analytics. We've talked about creative skills. We've talked about strategy. We've talked about uh, graphics and, and God knows what all. But do you really need all that? The question is not about having an ideal marketing team. The trick is to know what is it that you need and what. Right? You don't need all the skills at all times. You have to have the right strategy. And if that strategy is based on analytics, that allows you to develop that blueprint. And taking that blueprint and then executing on it is what the, the, the trick to success is. So again, there are 55,000 things out there, but you don't need to know everything. What you need to know is your environment. What works within your environment? Because obviously something's been working. You are growing. It's not like you're not growing. The question is to crystallize what is working so that you can scale that as opposed to starting from scratch. That gets overwhelming. The other thing is content. We've talked about content all day today. I mentioned it's about conversation. And you can have conversation if you've got something to talk about. right? And the way you have something to talk about is by working with partners like CFE where they have these research projects that kind of position you as a thought leader. And how do you uh, use that content? Right now, from what I, what I see, a lot of times companies struggle to quantify and measure the effectiveness of this content. An automation platform can allow you to do that. It will allow you to quantify that engagement. And based on that engagement, it allows you to determine what that course of action for that particular prospect should be so that you can help sales better allocate their bandwidth. Now, barring some other uh, government regulations and things like that, uh, to Dan's point, this automation platform can help you trim sales cycles. So not only can you generate leads, but you can actually impact revenue, and you can shorten the sales cycle. Who is in the position of power now? Right? That's why this technology is fascinating. Overwhelming, but fascinating. So, let's just quickly get on board in terms of what an automation platform is, right? I mean, I, I've heard Constant Contact call themselves a marketing automation platform. So, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of, sorry, forgot there was a mic there. <laughs> uh, so, I just want to make sure, I want to, uh, this is how we define an automation platform. If you're using multiple channels to drive traffic either to your website or microsite or webinar invites or whatever it is, you want to be able to collect that information. To Steve's point, you want to be able to collect demographic information so you can actually go on to develop a persona. And then given all that, what do you do? You create this prospect database right there in the center. But not everybody is a lead. Just because somebody downloaded a white paper shouldn't go to sales, as Dan was pointing out. Just because somebody attended a webinar shouldn't go to sales. But what this does is it allows you to set up an infrastructure that drives people from Google search to website to an email campaign to a newsletter subscription, possibly to a microsite, and then possibly onto a webinar or a text uh, spec sheet or something like that. And it allows you to have that conversation and automate that conversation based on the prospect's interest. It's not about what you want to tell them, it's about what they want to hear, right? So these automation platforms allows you to be just as attentive across your different industries, across your different product lines, using these dynamic conversations and letting the prospect guide the conversation. 
as opposed to you just blindly sending out emails where first week is case study, next week is a white paper, third week is a webinar, fourth week is an e-newsletter subscription. So it allows you to use that intelligence. And it helps you, but once you configure it, it helps you be more efficient because your in human capital is spent more on understanding what's happening and what's not working and what needs to get scaled as opposed to running email campaigns, making sure it went through, making sure you're working with the creative people. It'll tell you a lot of these things themselves to say what's working and what is not working. So to quickly summarize, a marketing automation platform allows, think of it as a nerve center. It's a nerve center for all the different marketing activities that you do, and it kind of tracks your engagement with the prospects. It tells you how good your content is. It tells you if you know where to reach your prospect, because if I'm actually, uh, uh, actually two months ago, I was talking to somebody who manufactures printer, printed presses. That each of those units cost about $150,000, and that person was spending 30% of their budget on Facebook. And, and as, as odd as that sounds, they just think, in their opinion, it was that they need to be on social media. But the question is not about whether you need to be on social media or not. The question is, where is your prospect trying to get information and understanding that? And an automation platform will tell you if you're not getting any engagement, right? So given that, what does the nuts and bolts of an automation platform look like? So in our opinion, these are the four different uh, modules that a company has to offer to you to be able to claim that they are marketing automation better. Right? The first is the data management, where it will allow you to profile data. It will allow you to do some basic data hygiene. It will allow you to do some segmentation. The next is analytics. It should allow you to understand what's working, what's not working. And different functions, you need different kinds of analytics. A chief marketing officer does not need to know the open rates on a particular email campaign. A CFO does not need to know the metrics of an email campaign. On the other hand, a marketing manager does. So one, one of the biggest mistakes that we find companies make is not marketing the automation platform capabilities or not communicating the progress of the automation capabilities within the internal constituents. And as a result, they lose traction because expectations then are not met. So it's very, very critical to make sure that if you're talking about an automation platform and if you actually are thinking of rolling out an automation platform, you set very clear expectations up front and keep the constituents informed on a regular basis to say what you plan on doing, when, and what should they expect. Because that's the only way they're going to stay on board. Now, on the other hand, if you're doing just email campaigns, or if you're just doing one or two things, you don't necessarily need an automation platform. If you don't want to integrate into the sales process as a marketing team, you don't necessarily need an automation platform. I mean, there is a whole module there about lead management, which is about lead scoring, which allows sales to prioritize who they talk to, when, and how. Now, an automation platform will do that automatically for you, but if you don't have an automation platform, you could still do that. In the key takeaways, I guess, that you guys have in your uh, uh, USB drives, there are some sample lead scoring models that you, if you want, you can look at. They're just based out of Excel. You don't always have to have fancy technology. I mean, if you think about it, this automation platform only takes what we do in our day-to-day -day life and makes it easier to do. So there, might, there may be a learning curve, but if you overcome that learning curve, it makes life a lot easier. And it allows you to have significant intelligence in terms of how you impact sales. Right? So the, the one thing that I'll go over here in terms of an automation platform is it allows marketing to be a revenue generator and not a cost center. That is significant. That gets me out of bed every night. Because you don't necessarily have to go just ask for money. Think of it this way. If you were to walk into your CFO's office and say last year, about 33% of the sales came from marketing because those leads were generated by marketing. They were qualified by marketing. 
and we reduced the sales cycle from six months to four months. And now we think we can scale. We can scale our revenues by at least 30% because of the industry, the way that it's trending, because of the differentiation factors we have, and because of the sales that we're seeing and the leads we're generating, the interest we're generating in the marketplace. Now, all of a sudden, it's a very different story of an ask, as opposed to inflation's up by 2%, so I at least have to have 3% to grow my budget. Right? So this creates that fundamental platform that allows you to have an intelligent conversation that is based on metrics and not just opinions. Okay. So, in terms of marketing, what, what do you need to know for those that are considering it or may consider it? Some obvious points is understand how the marketing team is currently getting engaged. Is it getting engaged primarily on the number of leads they generate? Is it getting engaged on the number of trade shows they go to? Right? And then it doesn't really matter if nobody ever follows up on anything. So the, the one thing you want to do is be able to tie the marketing success to the business objectives. So like I said, if the business objective is to grow by 25%, how do you translate that into a marketing world? A marketing manager knows what the average conversion rate is. A marketing manager knows how many leads are generated. A marketing manager knows, on average, what the seasonality of the business is. And given all that, you can calculate to say, I need to generate X number of leads, assuming sales does not change their process or anything. If I generate X number of leads, I know I can help this much on the sales growth side. Right? So now, if you actually have specific metrics, you can now actually talk to the rest of the constituents to say, you can, marketing is going to have a quantifiable contribution. So the first thing is make sure you have the marketing success metrics tied to the business objectives. The second thing is to make sure you have all the CXOs on board. Because to Steve's point earlier, he's absolutely right. Any vendor will tell you it takes about six or nine months to get paid back. But the other thing I'll tell you is the driver is only as good as the car. Did I get that back? I think I got that back. The car is only as good as the driver, right? So the car is only as good as the driver. So think of it this way, is understand what you need to accomplish, and then make sure you communicate with your executive staff to let them know that it's going to take this long to get there. Marketing is a journey. It's a marathon. It's not a race. It's a never-ending process, right? So make sure you set appropriate expectations and you keep them informed. Then understand what channels are currently working for you. The, the number one thing is when people take on too much. They go out and they sign up with the most uh, sophisticated automation platform and they think that's the, the silver bullet. Unfortunately, they lose out in the dilution of what was working because now they're too focused on the other things they don't know enough about. So the trick here is to take what you've got and make it better because your executive staff understands that. Your executive staff knows what you guys do and are on board with it. Now if you make it better, all of a sudden you just gain credibility and your learning curve is not that drastic because you have an idea of how you do it also. Right? So the, the thing here is to make sure you have a marketing plan that accommodates for what you currently do, but do it, do it better using these kinds of technologies. The fourth thing is, do you have an infrastructure where you certainly need these platforms integrated? Uh, again, going back to that Lumascape slide, yeah, you can get a technology platform for almost anything. But if you can't have them all talk to each other, now you've just created additional burden for you because now you have to go and talk to five, five different platforms, download the data in a spreadsheet, and try to create a holistic picture. Right? So uh, you, want, you need to make sure you understand what kind of a prospect database do you have? How rich is that demographic? And how rich do you need it to be? What are the different things you need to know about your prospect? Do you need to know their, uh, their buying authority? Do you need to know their title? Do you need to know their company revenues? Do you need to know, do they prefer to go to a trade show to procure the information, work with an association? Uh, how, where, or do they hang out at LinkedIn? Where do they hang out? And given all that information, how do you want to use the marketing automation platform to take advantage of this? So the number two um, uh, biggest advantage that an automation platform can give you is by monitoring the lowest hanging fruit 
by going into cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Right? We always think about customer acquisition, but seldom do we prioritize cross-selling and upselling existing customers. We already know plenty of them. They already like us. Why wouldn't we want to stay on top of mind with them? Right? So this automation platform will do that, where you could say that the shelf life of my product is two years. So starting six months or nine months, I want to start reaching out to these customers so that I can upsell them with my newer products, as opposed to waiting for a salesperson to call them. This is a quick landscape in terms of what the current, current space looks like. And this was actually done in May of last year by Dan's favorite serious decisions. Uh, but the, 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 about five years ago, there were probably about two main companies. Right now, there are 80. So this landscape is changing significantly. You have platforms that are being developed specifically for verticals. So for example, if you're a, a construction company that deals in a dealer distributor network, you've got an automation platform that focuses on just that relationship. If you are a, a, a consumer platform who, who goes across teenagers and adults, you've got a platform that kind of accommodates for that volume and that level of segmentation. There is a platform for everything. The trick is to know which one to use, because otherwise it can get overwhelming. So one thing that a marketing automation platform company will do is when you ask for a demo, they'll come in and they will show you the best possible demo you can get. They will wow you. And what they're doing is not inaccurate. The hard part is that they don't necessarily know the context of your company. They don't know your current processes. They don't know how much of these things that they are advocating is even real in your company. So if you are considering an automation platform, the, the one thing you certainly want to do is make sure you document your own process. How do you currently do things? How do you talk to sales? How do you generate leads? How do you measure performance? And then when you talk to these automation platform companies, you have them given these rules of engagement. And you say, Mr. Platform Vendor, how does your platform help me in this environment? Because if you do it the other way around, where you go and get an Alcor or Marketo, nothing wrong with them, but if you go ahead and get one of the best out there, then you try to retool your processes for that platform, that becomes a downward spiral very quickly. Because sales are not going to overnight uh, change their behavior overnight. You're going to have to prove yourself, to Dan's point, where they had a lead that closed in half the time. All of a sudden, the salespeople are paying attention. So you have to prove yourself. So that's why what you want to be able to do is accommodate the automation platform in your current processes as opposed to the other way around. Okay. So moving on, the five critical factors you want to look at. One is flexibility. Now these are obvious, but they're very, very important because people tend to forget. They, they get enamored either by the, the glamour of the platform or the potential of the platform or the reporting of the platform. But when, what they forget about is how can they do it? Do they have that same level of expertise to do it in-house? Because the people giving the demos are living and breathing on that platform. So how flexible is this platform and how flexible do you need it to be? Do you need it to integrate into six different technology platforms? Or are you okay if it just integrates into salesforce.com, right? Second is implementation. You really like an automation platform. Is it gonna take them three months to roll it out for you? Or can they do it in a couple of weeks? How long have they been around? And that ties in very, quick, very well with uh, customer service. Because it's a new platform, there is gonna be a learning curve. And because of that, you're gonna need support. So how good is that customer service? How good are the forums online that you can go on? Are they popular enough? Is there enough information available? Because once you get stuck, you don't want to stay stuck. And sometimes if you go after a particular platform, you may not have the customer service and now you're stuck. Because it's hard to navigate through some of these things. So lastly is, uh, is scalability. So where do you think you are today? Maybe you're doing just email marketing. Maybe you're doing trade shows. And that's it. But you have a lot of pressure from executives or salespeople saying, we don't have a LinkedIn presence. We need a LinkedIn presence. 
Or somebody else might say, we need to do other things. We need to do webinars and things like that. So if you think there are some things in the pipeline, how would those things get incorporated in this platform? Will it? Or will you need to go get another platform? So this is a, before I get into the case study, does anybody have any questions in terms of what I just talked about? Any challenges? Anybody disagree with what I said? Part of it may have been repetition. No. Wow, I didn't realize I was that mesmerized. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so one company I want to talk about is case uh, is a company called Comfort Audio. Does, is anybody an assisted manufacturing listening device manufacturer over here? No. I guess we can talk freely about that. Now. Uh, so this company, the reason I brought up this company specifically is because it's a fascinating example of what a small company has done. A small company that barely has a marketing resource and how they were able to use technology and smart marketing and a right strategy to turn things around. This is not necessarily a Cinderella story. It's not about how this company just signed on to an automation platform and three months all of a sudden they were the golden goose of the company. It wasn't about that. This company is, is uh, based out of Sweden. They're the 900 pound gorilla in, uh, in, Sweden, in Europe, actually. Scandinavia, Sweden, uh, UK. So they are the 900 pound gorilla, the corporate headquarters. They wanted to come to the US. They've had bad experience in the US in terms of market penetration. So they had a real, and in comes a new president. The president is given a skeleton crew. And skeleton is an understatement, I guess. They had one salesperson outside, one outside salesperson, one inside salesperson, one office manager slash marketing manager. And that's it. And if anybody's worked with Swedish companies, it's not necessarily autonomous for them to just do whatever they want, right? So the idea here was number one, this company has to gain trust and credibility from their corporate to continue investment. But at the end of the day, they also have to prove it with sales. So what they've done is they've actually taken some time to research automation platforms because they need virality, they need scale, and they don't have enough people to do it. They don't have salespeople to qualify things. So they use the automation platform to generate leads, to qualify leads, and, and it wasn't a pleasant journey, it was a trial and error. And in terms of that, they've actually seen success where in the first year, 33% of their sales were completely organic. They reduced their sales cycles by about 15 to 20%. And now all of a sudden, uh, they've been asked by corporate to come in and teach what they've done to the other constituencies. So uh, I, I would have loved to get more into this, but I think we're kind of running short on time. But for those that are interested, look through the reference slides. You guys all have the PowerPoint. And I've gone through the details of what the company has done, including the samples the kinds of reports they have seen and things like that, and how they went about making decisions. So this, this example is about a company and a team that was committed. It's about due diligence. It wasn't about the silver bullet. And that's what an automation platform requires. It should pan out if you stick to the game, right? Any questions? Oh, one last thing is if, if an automation platform can make a significant difference to a company like that. Think about what it can do for you guys. So to go back to the earlier point about being curious is for those that are not considering it, just think about what it can do for you. So that's all I have, unless you guys have any questions. Questions on marketing automation? No, actually, as a matter of fact, no. I think uh, the vendor generally depends on the scale and the complexity or the sophistication of marketing practices that they want. Uh, so from our perspective, we don't represent any automation platform. Actually, that, in a way, this is kind of funny because I'm talking here touting marketing automation platform, yet I don't really represent anyone in particular. Yeah, it's just that we use this technology to serve out our clients to help them get sales. And that's why we're believers in this, and not necessarily from a sales or a technology sales standpoint. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the